and welcome to a brand new week of Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya. Now more than ever, I'm Jeff Kinnegan. Now we've picked a theme this week that just summarizes exactly who we are, where we are as a country right now in this point in time. We're calling it selfless Kenyans, Kenyans who think country first and everything else second. And you've heard, you've seen the newspaper headlines, you watch TV, and it looks like a lot of the times we're thinking tribe first and everything else second. So we need to change, we need a paradigm shift. And we're going to get our guest this week to try and help us think the right way as Kenyans. My first guest today, folks, couldn't have picked a better guest for a Monday. A man who, I tell you, he has given it all to this country. In fact, 50 years ago, 1953, he proposed setting up a foundation because he wanted to give back. This man has worked in his entire life to create a multi-billion dollar operation. It's known as Comcraft Group of Companies, and they're in more than 50 countries, he tells me. Turn over billions and billions of dollars. But if you look at him, he's like the simplest guy. You could pass him in the street. You wouldn't even think he was 83 years old. 2011, Forbes Magazine Africa named him one of Africa's top 20 persons of the year. Top 20. He's in there. The other day, Ernst & Young, that's right, they gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award. Very well deserved. This man, he keeps going on and on. He's like the Energizer Bunny. But he says the thing he's most proud of, check this out, is officially becoming a Kenyan citizen. Can you imagine? That's all. This is what he's proud of. The other day, they gave him this official certificate. He's a Kenyan. Before he became a Kenyan, he was an OBE. The Queen gave him an OBE. We should be calling him Sir. This man, folks. It's all about giving back, creating foundations. And he has numerous ones. I can't even name them all. But just to name a few, there's the Chandaria Business School at the USIU. There's the um, Incubation Center at Kenyatta University. There's the Chandaria Medical Emergency Center at Nairobi Hospital. And on and on and on. It's all about the gift of giving. You know who we're talking to, folks. Sir Manu is on the bench on this Monday. Sit back, <laughs> Sir Manu. Thank you. Sir is still to come. <laughs> Manu, I don't know how you do it, man, and still look like you're 35 years old. What is this? What kind of genes did the man give you? Well, uh, for a long time I worried about it. And what makes me going? When I go to sleep, I take a note and I clean my slate. I don't have any enemies. What I've done, I forget it. I don't want to be obligated. Forget it. And when I get up, next morning, clean slate. So that you don't carry the baggage on your head. Yeah. And this is something which is very important. Forgive. Get away from it. Not just get embedded and say, hey, hey, I've done it. No. Yeah. Out all that. The next morning is another opportunity. There doesn't seem to be too much forgiveness these days in this country, man. When I know we're in an election year, but just four years ago, we were tearing this country apart. It looks like we're heading back there. Well, I think I'm worried too. I'm extremely worried today. Because what is happening is that we are having more tribals. I'm first a Kikuyu, then I'm a Kenyan. I'm first a Western, then I'm Kenyan. This is just not necessary. We must stand up first, each one of the political leaders, and come and say, Kenya first, then your tribe, mm. then your groupings. Yeah. Yeah, every, everybody has to make some grouping to, make, to get elected in that particular area. But this whole question of tearing the country, which has remained together for all these years, how can we just make it to say, it's Kikuyu? It's Luo, it's Western, it's Mkamba. Why? So I think that the first thing is every person must come out very clearly. First is Kenya, second is Kenya, third is Kenya, and fourth, fifth, sixth, yes, you name it. 
but not otherwise. Yes, and I'm surprised that you're so proud of having gotten this certificate of registration as a citizen of Kenya. Absolutely, absolutely, because I think that I deserve it, not, not deserve it in sense, but why not? I've worked for this country since I was born. I remained outside probably 15, 20 years studying and other things, but otherwise, from the day I was born, I have been here and I made very sure that Kenya gets the best, both entrepreneur-wise, employment-wise, and also social service-wise. Mm. I don't call it a, a charities. I don't call it a philanthropy. Yes, people call me a philanthropist. To me, it's giving back from where you're taken, a part of it. Lift the hand, give them a hand, lift them up. This is most important. But how did you do that, Manu? Because you didn't start this the other day. When 1953, I was reading, 1953, you proposed to your dad you wanted to start a foundation. And he thought you were crazy. He said, you're not a Ford, you're not a Rockefeller. How could you? Well, I thought at that time, and, I, and when he asked me, I said, listen, Papa, it's not that. All I want is some kind of a unit where we as a family, we as a company can focus. That means there is a Chandaria Foundation. It keeps on coming every time. Yes, we are earning. We are making good, good strides. Then at the same time, that Chandaria Foundation keeps on coming. That keeps a constant reminder that yes, you have to give back to the society. And this is what, after three years, two years, he thought and said, I will give you 10% of my company to Chandaria Foundation. So it's one of the oldest foundations. Mm. The point is, unless you have a focus and say, I want this to happen, it never happened. Yeah. yeah. You must be, you, you said a moment ago, you're worried about where this country is heading. And with the kinds of resources you've pumped back into this country, it must worry you every, I mean, you must have some sleepless nights. Yeah, the point is that all, all I say, what I've got is Kenyan. It's all I do from that is, a small portion after paying the taxes might remain some some dividend the rest is on kenyan soil it's done by kenyan people it's it's on the, everything is kenyan so where is the question of that might to worry if you have to worry tomorrow what would you feel like this is your country where would you go there no way there's no other kenya there's no other kenya i i, I can go to any other country but why have stuck home i think i was born here I like the country, I love the people, so why not be here and be a participant to something which is growing, which can make some imp uh, impression. This is what is necessary. What do you tell the politician, the political class right now, those ones who all literally, literally seem to want to be president? It's like the biggest thing. Everyone wants to be president. Yeah. They're not thinking about where this, the vision for this country yeah. in the next 20, 30 years. No, you see, I was a, I was a, party to making Vision 2030. And what I see today even, even we're talking about 2012 now, we have not even started. Just like MDGs, mm. which is coming to an end in 2015. 2015. Yep. Where are we? Nowhere. Nowhere near even. So the question is that to me, you have to make very sure that it's your country first. If you are well, you expect other to be well. If you want to be respected, you got to respect others. If you want to eat your food nicely, you must make sure that the Kenya also eats nicely. If you can't think on that line, then you cannot be a servant of the society, or servant of the country. Yeah. To me, what makes me to do all this is, I feel I'm obliged, I have to do, for my country, where I was born, and now I'm a citizen. Yes. In fact, now you, you can be president, Manu. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And there are those out there who say, you know, we need a CEO. We need someone who's going to crack the whip and get us on, back on track on that vision. Yeah, well, I, it's a nice thought. <laughs> but let me tell you one thing. Yeah. Uh, three days back, we went to, uh, uh, to Kariobangi uh, with the chairman, with the managing director of East Aken Breweries. We walked five kilometers walk, and then we set it up a, a water tanks, a East African 
um, East African breweries provided the tanks and we provided the water carts and etc. The idea was, at that time it stuck on my mind and I told uh, the, 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 the chairman of, uh, the managing director of East African breweries, I wish the cabinet can walk together on these streets without police there, police there. Just walk and see the pain of our people. You know, it's nice to be in nice circumstances. Now, when I go home, I'm in Mutaiga, I'm just close my door and that's, I'm in heaven. It's okay. Yeah. But unless and until you also put your stop, foot and on the street and go there and see where the pain is. You cannot be. The pain alone can move you. So what I would like to say, take that little pain in your heart. Then you start thinking about your people, about the problems they go through. You know, there was a, there was a um, dispensary. 250 people visit. No water. How can, how can you expect that to happen? There's a school over there. No water. Girls' school. Yeah. No water. How do you expect this to happen? So I think that we are so, so narrow-minded. Mm. As long as I'm comfortable, yeah. A hell who cares about the rest. We're selfish, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Selfish. Absolutely. To me, there's no other words. The point is this, that all of us have a capacity to do it, and we should do it. The question is, who? Decision has to be made by individual, himself. We can only tell, like this, you're every, everybody viewing today. They must make up their mind by even seeing this. Hey, what is this guy doing? Why is he spending all this? He should be enjoying his life. Yeah. No, to me, every day that passes, is a, to me, at 83, it's every day is a bonus. Mm. And I want to make very sure that the 12 hours, 15 hours that I survive that way, before I go to sleep, I must make the impact that is necessary. And that's where I'm always involved in lots of social work. Yeah. I don't call it charitable work. It's a social work because we are one to one. When I go over there, thousands of people shake my hand. I can walk in every, any, any slum. They all know me. Mm. That's Manu Chandaria. That's what they call you? Yeah. Because, because they know. And I don't have to have anybody bodyguard with me or anything. Because I have been visiting them for years. All right, generation change. But the point is that your capacity to go to the people yeah. makes you the, the person that you want to become, yeah. not otherwise. Where do you get the time, Manu? Where do you get the time? You're, you're, I see you're a Rotarian. You do so many things. You're always out there doing stuff. Where do you get the time? Well, uh, my my total time is five thirty, uh, six six o'clock, uh, six hours of sleep. Six. That's all. Five thirty, five and a half to six. All the rest, eighteen hours, is something to be been doing. Manu, I want to talk about that after the break. I don't know where you get the energy, man. I really don't, but it's incredible. Kenyans need to watch this program over and over because you're not making this up. No, you're, not, no. you're not just saying this, okay? And the other thing is, you are big on the East African community. That's the only way this region is going to grow and develop with 150 plus million people. It's important, it's crucial, it's key to build this block. And also, how does it feel, man, to be one of the most powerful people in Africa? And also, Sir Manu. <laughs> Look, if anything goes in my head, yeah. then I'm no more humble. <laughs> Your wife will crack the whip. <laughs> it's only Monday. Sir Manu is on the bench, folks, talking like a true patriot. Kenyan first, everything else second. That's what this week is all about. Selflessness. Manu Chandaria, at 83 years old, literally leading from the front. Do not even think of touching that remote control because you know Sir Manu has plenty more. After the break, back in a moment. And welcome back to Capital Talk. This is one of the reasons why we do what we do on this very bench when we have people like Manu Chandaria showing up telling us how he got to where he got. Yes, hard work 
and more importantly, giving back, that's when we realize that we have a job to do. And Sir Manu has showed up once again, one of the 20 most influential people in Africa, according to Forbes Africa. No doubt about that. Keeps giving back. He's a Rotarian. He's a philanthropist. He's a billionaire industrialist. Most of all, he's just a humble, humble Kenyan. Sit back, if you will. <laughs> were, you, were you saying you were an actor back in the day? Absolutely. I got the, I got the first prize. <laughs> Manu, yeah, yeah, yeah. actor. Yeah, but you see, the question is that you cannot convince other people by just being... It's not possible. You got to act, you got to read their minds, you got to support them and understand what they would like to hear. And that's hectic, man. <laughs> I need some tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are a good actor, don't worry. <laughs> Manu, <laughs> at the end of the day, obviously you have hope in this country, don't you? Yeah. That's why you are where you are, doing the things that you do. Yeah. You have hope. Absolutely. I, I, I think that this country has got everything going. When we talk about four nations in Africa, the Southern Saharan Africa, the first is South Africa, second is Nigeria, and on the, this coast of Africa is, um, is uh, Kenya. And there's a fourth country, uh, and you can select anyone which is going, growing, growing fast. Yeah. But these are the four countries where people look at, and Kenya has always been leading. This leadership has not come out just yesterday. It's been cultivated in our blood. For anything that we want to do, we want to do it the best and we're the top. And that's why lots of people around us always feel that, hey, Kenyan, to me, it's a gross potential. So if we can play a role by making very sure that this type of community, SADC, COMESA, South African Custom Union, join hands by unilateral, uh, bilateral understanding between one group to another group and multilateral and open up the borders so that the goods which are manufactured in Africa in this region move right to the eastern coast of Africa move without any hindrance then you can put capacity of size you cannot put otherwise every country requires something fine but then you can't put five of them in five countries it will pay you once you say one in five countries, and you can do it. So my way of looking at it is that it's very simple. I was speaking to the, to the trade minister in, in Durban, mm. where we just set up a new plant, and he was opening up. And I told him that in my speech, that now as South Africa is a leader amongst the economy, the role model as far as the country is concerned, you must be driving this idea that all the all the, the, the blocks must put together will create at least out of the, I would say, 500 million people. Yeah. And out of those 500 million people or 400 million people, you will find at, at least 50 to 60 million middle class who has enough money to buy. It can depend on its own. It's a propulsion. And it will sustain the rest. S sustain the rest, yeah. So to me, he, he, was thinking, he said, yes, I think that, and he repeated, he said that, yes, I think that, and I said, listen, to do that, ego must be behind. You go and dictate, nobody listens. You go as a humble, and say, now listen, how do we help everybody? While South Africa is being helped, but simultaneously Kenya is being helped. Simultaneously Tanzania is being helped. Everybody, then the minute we know this, then we know that the jobs will remain with us. Today, you find out anything and everything. Majority of them comes from outside. And our children and our youth are pacing state of Kenya. And it's not any new for Kenya. The same thing in Tanzania, same thing in Uganda. Some have, have but here we have very little resource except uni, human beings. Yeah. And so we find it very difficult to accept our children sitting at home. Four, five, six. Why? It's our fault. We should be making very sure that wherever I'm sitting, whether I'm a, 
whether I'm a, a clerk, whether I'm a, a professional, whether I'm a manager, whether I'm a CEO, I must make very sure that, hey, fate of those people depends on us. We must be able to carve a space for these guys. Now, if you can't, then you know it's, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just thinking about my people, my people. No, it's employment across the board. Across the board. Across the board. Because the point is that if South Africa can make something good, let's buy that. If Kenya can make something good and South Africa is not making, let's buy them. The other point is that I always keep on arguing. South Southern Sudan wants to be a party now to East African community. I would suggest that East African community should be saying, hey, come on, man, move. Yeah. Because there's another source, yes. a huge source yeah. it's of a, possibility. Yeah, it's, it's a big block. Big block. Because, and that, that, is, that will give us an opening for other people to go in manufacture and provide services also. And there are people coming over to us, like at USIU, we see always 30, 40 Sudanese studying there. Because that's the only way we can grow in that particular point. So my, my feeling is that East African community still needs leadership at the top. The president must sit together and argue about the issues. And before they sit, They'll say, whatever the decision has been taken as consensus will prevail, whether I liked it or not. I might be arguing as much as I can argue, you're arguing that on the table. Once the decision has been taken, that is what you're going to do. It's final. It's final. Uh, if you, you see, we are sitting on a nice seesaw. Many times, you know, we think that, oh, a wonderful seesaw. It must also dawn to us that we have responsibilities for the hinterland countries. Southern Sudan, Southern Ethiopia, Eastern Congo, Uganda, Rwanda, Northern Tanzania. We have responsibility. How can you walk away from the responsibility? And it's an opportunity for us. Double the size of Mumbai support, put two lines <laughs> railway, open up a Lamu port. It's an opportunity. You'll not know what he does. And it's a no-brainer. No, 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 no. It's really. not rocket science. No, no, it's not rocket science. And, and money will just flow in. There's no problem. There's no problem. When you ask Kenyans to come and say, <coughs> we want 15 billion, <coughs> like that, it comes out. It'll come out. Yeah. Because they, they start feeling that, hey, hey, <coughs> if I have the money, and it can make some change, bring happiness, bring Equality in terms of when I see, I see, then what I'm seeing is not what I want to see. Then I think there's a great chance. Yeah. What gives you the greatest pleasure, Sir Manu? What, is it walking down the streets of Kariobang and these kids running up to you and saying, thank you for that water tank? I mean, what, what gives you the greatest pleasure? That's, that's a pleasure. The point is that the, the pleasure comes from anybody who is so small comes and recognizes you. It doesn't recognize it because I'm Manu Chandaria, but recognize the work that I do. And when it comes and says, hello, how are you? I came into the hotel over here. There are already seven people who shook my hand. Hmm. Now, I don't even know them. And there's no necessity that I know their names. The question is that you should be humble enough that the other party would like to walk in and say, hello. But if you keep aside and aloof, yeah. then nobody wants to say. Exactly. So it's a, it's a humility which counts. And humbleness and humility is the most difficult because ego is most difficult to level it off. Correct. And this is what's going to destroy this country, isn't it? It's that ego. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. To me, <clears throat> the minute we start, this is our Kenya. A is better in, in that province, B is better in that province, C is better in that province. Let's make the best use of it. Let's not talk that this is the only province. That's not possible. I think that we are just, <clears throat> we must make sure that we drive ourselves without meeting accidents. Our purpose is to reach to the destination without accidents. The minute you hit the accident, your, your, all your ambition to reach to the target is over. So I think that the, all we would like is all the politicians and all other civic leaders corporate leaders start thinking 
that's up to us. And which, how many percent we are? Probably 3%, 4% of the total Kenya. Yes. That's up to us to guide this country in such a way that we make their life also easy as much as we want our life. But that attitude and ideology only comes when you're humble enough to understand the pain the people are going through. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Well put, Manu. Well put. When you travel where you go, like you just came back from Durban and you go to other places, what do they think of Kenyans? What do they say about you Kenyans? Uh, <clears throat> many of them, many of time they say, oh, it's a beautiful country. Always visited. Uh, <clears throat> and I said to them, well, if you visit, then don't you think that there's a possibility? Ah, oh, yeah, but you know, uh, bureaucracy, mm. to get anything done, takes a lot of time. Yeah. So I said, but we, what about us? He said, but you are there. I'm there and I want to come in here. I have the major uh, businesses going there and I want to come over here. <clears throat> Unless I get that speed to invest. But if I keep on coming and going, keep on coming and going, there are countries in competition to invite investments. Yeah. You go where there's a red carpet. Yeah. Rwanda. Absolutely. They, they fall over backwards. <clears throat> absolutely. Welcoming people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe that's why Paul Kagame was also elected one of the most influential people, absolutely. along with yourself. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. My goodness. <laughs> Sir Manu, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I, could, I could talk to you all day long, but parting shot. Give us a parting shot as Kenyans going forward. This is an election year. This is a watershed, cross, whatever you want to call it. Tell us. My, my only parting shot would be, think you're Kenyan first, second you're Kenyan, you're Kenyan third, then what you are, you might be a, <clears throat> a tribe, you might be a business, whatever it is, that's all third. Unless you make this, we will not be able to make what we really want. And we are giving wrong promises to our people, because we are not giving them what you call a prosperity by divide, but by getting together and saying that it's our country, let's do something for it, I think that will make it. So it's not, it's not difficult. No. no, it's not rocket science. No, no, it's not rocket science. Sir Thank Manu. You. Thank you. Oh, hey, stop, it? stop telling me. <laughs> okay, what about, what about President Chandaria? <laughs> No, no, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you wear a crown. <laughs> you just don't, yeah. Well done, Manu. Thank you. Fantastic. Great thank advice. You. And thank keep you. at it, man. And happy thank belated you. birthday, no, you know? First of March. Thank you. First of March. 83? Yeah. No, come on. Yeah. 63. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sir Manu Chindaria, folks, he's 83 years old. He's broken it down and it's only Monday. One of the 20 most influential people in Africa. Check it out, Forbes magazine, along with Paul Kagame, Ellen Johnson, Sirleaf, Good Luck Jonathan, and those top Africans. Manu Chindaria, Kenyan, if you will, OBE, you name it, EBS. The works and giving back each and every day, walking through the streets of Gariobangi kids running up to him he says humility is key egos will destroy this place what more advice can one ask for on a monday and on a week with a theme is selfless kenyans what a guest what a show what a week it's going to be we're going to turn this around if it kills us we think kenyan first like manu says and we will take off as a country and a community and a region you're going to find guests like Manu Chandari anywhere else but right here on the bench on the award-winning station, K24. Where we are, yes indeed, even in times of Kenyan first, Kenyan second, and Kenyan third. We're still all Kenyan. All the time. Thank you. Sir Manu. Thank you. <laughs> Talk is filmed at Fairmont, the Norfolk.